The world may seem bleak at the moment. Viruses, war and disasters seem to be ripping society apart. But what if I was to tell you there was once a man who, seeing how ravaged by crime his city had become, decided to put on a mask and do what he could to make things better. And what if I was to tell you this man would then, thanks to his own hubris and hypocrisy, become a villain to so many people? This man is real, and he is called Phoenix Jones, but his story does not start with that name. Benjamin John Francis Fodor was born on the 25th of May 1988 in Texas. There are a few different conflicting sources on his early life, with some sources claiming his mum was a drug dealer and his dad was shot dead while robbing a store. It's unclear how much of this, if any of it, is true, but what we do know for sure is that a young Ben Fodor spent his childhood in orphanages until he was adopted at the age of five and moved to Seattle. At the age of 13, he would meet the president at the time, Bill Clinton, and Fodor told the president he wanted to be a superhero when he was older. From a young age, Ben and his adopted brother Karos showed a love and talent for fighting, specifically MMA. They were so good, in fact, that both of them would go on to fight professionally when they were older, and at one point even fought each other, with Karos ending up the victor. Before they became professional fighters, Karos served in the military, and Ben settled down, having two kids, and getting a job at a local daycare, where he taught young children with special needs. One day in March 2009, an event would happen which would end up changing the direction of his life. Ben and his son were going to their car when they found out that their car had been broken into. According to Ben, there had been several witnesses, but none of them had bothered to intervene, which greatly annoyed him. It starts out with a car break in, and the guy put a rock inside a mask and smashed it through the window and left the rock in the mask in the car, right? My son and I come running up. My son falls in the glass, cuts his leg open. I call the police, and they're like, there's no evidence. It's raining. We're not even going to send a cop. The damage is less than $500. They cited the weather. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was incredible. So I got kind of mad. I thought, this, this can't be the way it goes. In a separate incident, Ben would be out drinking when one of his friends was assaulted. Going back to his car to look for his phone, Ben found the mask of the person who broke into his car in the glove box. Putting on the mask, he then chased down and apprehended the man who assaulted his friend. And on that night, Ben Fodor became the BTEC superhero, Phoenix Jones. Now, it is here that I do need to point out that most of what we know about his early years comes from Phoenix Jones himself. And this is a man who definitely has a large ego. He literally wrote a comic about himself. Also, when explaining his origin, he seemingly has changed some of the details on different occasions, especially about the night he first put on the mask. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you need to take everything Phoenix Jones ever says with a pinch of salt. Jones saw himself as a real-life Batman or Nightwing, but while Batman spent years training both physically and mentally to fight crime, Phoenix Jones decided he only needed six months of training. While Batman had the Batmobile, Phoenix Jones had the Key of Justice. And while Batman had the Batcave, Phoenix Jones had comic book shops to change in. To say that the beginning of Phoenix Jones' crime-fighting career was difficult, would certainly be an understatement. Just like Batman, he used to sit atop roofs around Seattle, waiting for crime to occur. This method of locating crime was short-lived, since he quickly found out that getting down from roofs safely took a lot of time. Time that gave criminals plenty of chance to run away. Or, well, in this case, I imagine they kind of just walked away, confused, at why a man in a really weird outfit was shouting at them. Jones had also purchased a net gun, but he found that that too did not work as well as in the comics. After an incident where, while chasing a criminal, Jones went for his net gun, but instead of hitting the criminal, he ended up trapping himself. This criminal then proceeded to steal Jones' wallet before escaping. After some time, a police officer came to help Phoenix Jones, but found the entire situation so funny, he took several photos before freeing him. 
In yet another attempt to copy his comic book idols, Batman and Nightwing, after stopping criminals, Jones claimed he would tie them up and leave them for the cops. But he had to stop doing this after he realised that for pretty obvious reasons, these criminals were not being convicted. Okay, so there were a few flaws in Jones's methods. But you know what? He did actually end up doing some good. His early years were relatively uneventful, with Jones often getting beaten up badly after picking one too many fights of criminals. He even was shot and stabbed multiple times. But despite this, he kept at it. It wouldn't be until 2011 that Phoenix Jones's actions started to become well known, not just in Seattle, but across the world. On January 2nd, Jones intervened in an attempted car robbery, which caught the attention of CBS News. This led to CBS not just covering the incident, but making an entire segment on the man. In the same year, he stopped a man from stealing a bus by spraying the would-be hijacker with pepper spray. It is clear that he was helping people, and was having a positive impact on his local community. We actually have a man that Phoenix saved from a bar fight one night. He claims that Phoenix actually saved his life. Everyone, please welcome Fabio. Uh, a man was getting uh, violent with security at a nightclub. He proceeded to get violent with me and my group of friends. Phoenix ran in and pepper sprayed the guy and defused the entire situation. How did you hear about it? Had you, were you eating dinner in the restaurant? Or? You, you know, most situations aren't like this one. I happened to be on top of the parking garage across the street, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I saw the thing, the thing happen, and I was able to, uh, there's like a little pole, and I was able to jump from the top, shimmy the pole down, and uh, get into the, the situation. As time went on, he actually began to also learn from his mistakes, and became pretty good at what he was doing. He even started to record his patrols with a GoPro, the footage of which proved crucial in the prosecution of at least one drug dealer. In the beginning, Jones's costume was pretty basic to say the least. But as time went on, and he began to be more serious about the whole superhero thing, he realised he needed a suit upgrade to properly protect himself. The problem was, he didn't have anywhere near the money for his dream superhero suit. So he decided to make use of his cult-like following and start a donation drive, with him initially asking for $10,000. Why so expensive? Well, he decided his suit needed to not only protect him, but it needed to look cool, and be able to livestream. And more than anything else, he wanted the best. No second hand or second rate armour would be good enough for him. This quickly stirred up some controversy with other real life superheroes. But what made said controversy worse was that the donation drive was directly linked to a charity website ran by a woman called Purple Rain. But more on her later. Now that Phoenix Jones had begun to develop a following, there also came an increase in wannabe heroes inspired by him. This was inevitably going to lead to some problems, but Phoenix Jones, being ever ambitious, saw this as an opportunity. Already, he had encountered and worked alongside other heroes, and so he decided to form his own superhero group, the Rain City Superhero Movement. The selection for this group was personally overseen by Jones, who was highly critical of many of the current active heroes. Those who either didn't fight, or were fighting for what Jones personally believed were the wrong reasons, would not be allowed in. The police's first encounter with the group was in July 2011, when ten heroes, including Phoenix Jones, were found patrolling around Seattle. The Rain City has had many other members, such as Red Dragon, Blue Sparrow, and most notably, Purple Rain, whose main goal was to tackle domestic abuse. While normally not going on active patrol around Seattle, Purple Rain would instead coordinate the actions of the other members. Basically, she was the team's oracle or tech support, whichever one you prefer. Early on, she got together with Phoenix Jones, and their relationship was something that was heavily pushed in the group's marketing. One of the most publicised events in the group's history happened on May Day 2013. A bunch of guys started a riot in our city on May Day, and the police didn't listen to us when we were like, yo, these guys said they're going to go to the federal building and try to throw a bomb in it. So me and a couple others, right, hopped into Kia Justice and peeled out over there. 35 guys in black masks start storming the building, and we're in a fist fight with these guys like outside the building. 
And they tossed this backpack into the building. It had a pipe bomb in it. So we grab the backpack and throw it out in the middle of the street. And security pulls up. And I figure we're going to jail. They've got like shotguns and they're super serious. Guy rolls up. He's like, Phoenix, we love your work, man. Shakes my hand. We hopped in the car. They arrested like three different people. And we got a little plaque. So I really have to talk about the costumed wannabe superhero rabbit hole that I've fallen into. These so-called real-life superheroes are actually a pretty sizable worldwide community with their own wiki fandom pages and drama. There are really a lot of these people, and some of them really take themselves seriously. Like, too seriously. Whereas other people are clearly just trying to have fun while also helping people. I spent way too long going through the different pages of these heroes and learning more about this admittedly rather interesting community, which is filled with drama. One of the heroes that really interested me is a hero called the Renegade, who is allegedly the best hero in the UK, but no one can prove that he really exists. Just look at this fandom page for him. His villains are the Banker, the Ripper, and the Gingerbread Man. What kind of criminal name is the Gingerbread Man? Interestingly though, Renegade does actually come into the story of Phoenix Jones in a small way. Some would argue that a true superhero is only as good as their rogues gallery. And believe it or not, Phoenix Jones does actually have a lineup of villains that he has fought. Now, most of what we know about Phoenix Jones' villains comes from the man himself, primarily from videos talking about them, so obviously take all of this with a grain of salt. Of course, there were the normal gangs in the local area, who would have trouble with a man like Phoenix Jones, but there were also several people who some might call villains. These ranged from the hilarious and harmless, to the slightly more serious. Among the harmless villains, we have the likes of Fishstick, who would throw fish at Phoenix, and the League of Inconvenience. Fish sticks? Fish sticks? This guy had a giant fish suit. This sounds like it's just a setup for a pun. Is this real? No, yeah, for real. All right. He had, a giant, uh, he had a giant fish stick suit, and he would just jump around yelling fish sticks and like mess up our patrols. And it was so annoying and so distracting, we couldn't get anything done. The League of Inconvenience, though, was my favorite. I don't know the League of Inconvenience. Okay, so I would get a letter in like a comic book shop, because comic book shops around the city would catch my mail for me. So I'd get these letters and I'd open them and it would be like, I'm in this danger, this is what's happening, I really, really need your help, and go f*** yourself, Phoenix Jones, League of Inconvenience. Some of these people were actually committing serious crimes, though, such as Scarlet. But the, right. the, the more serious is we had Scarlet. Scarlet was actually this guy in, uh, in Belltown, he had an R. It's like a R, almost like a hole punch. Mm. He would rob people by stamping them with this R, mm. and they'd scream and drop whatever they had. He'd steal with the iPhones and whatever. He'd stash them and then let the cops bust him. And then when he got out, he'd pawn the stuff for money and spend all his money as long as he could, and then go back to robbing people. We robbed. We got this guy like six or seven different times. It was it was pretty crazy. And he would he would monologue. He just kept breaking out of Arkham. <laughs> <laughs> and he would monologue, which was the best part. He would just be like, you got me, Jones. You and your friends, but my whole punch will be back. And he, he was... He, was, he liked it. He was, oh yeah, it was his thing. He was insane. Out of all these villains, the one that Phoenix took the most seriously was definitely Arsenic. Well, it seems his name was actually Arsonic, and there was some kind of miscommunication. But Arsonic is much dumber, so I'm just going to call him Arsenic. As you probably guessed from his name, Arsenic would run around setting off fires near areas that Phoenix Jones was known to be patrolling, even leaving notes taunting him. Obviously, this was taken pretty seriously, but this person was not the hardened criminal mastermind Jones probably hoped he was, since after three days, Arsenic was caught and revealed to in fact just be a 15-year-old teenager looking to cause some trouble. Without a doubt though, Phoenix Jones' most famous villain, unfortunately for him, was Rex Velvet. Rex Velvet is an individual who claims to be a real-life supervillain, and specifically aims to taunt Phoenix Jones. Rex Velvet's evil deeds include stealing the mascot of the Seattle Seahawks, only to be foiled by a 12-year-old kid with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Okay, so maybe he's not a true supervillain? And that is part of why Phoenix Jones seems to really not like Rex Velvet. 
Rex Velvet's videos are clearly made as jokes at the expense of Jones, and the real-life superhero community as a whole. Jones has made it abundantly clear that he is not a fan of Rex Velvet at all, with them going back and forth on Twitter even into 2020. However, eventually things would begin to fall apart for Phoenix Jones. While most of the key events would happen later, there was one incident in 2011 that would end up changing the course of his superhero career. On October 9th, 2011, Jones broke up a fight outside a nightclub, but resorted to using pepper spray on them after a woman attacked him. When the police arrived, they arrested Jones, but let him out seven hours later after he posted bail. While footage recorded by his fellow heroes would prove his case, on the 13th of the same month, Jones would end up being held in court regarding the incident. The prosecutors told the judge they needed more time to decide whether to bring charges against him. Stepping outside, Jones was greeted by a group of reporters, and he made, quite possibly, the biggest decision of his superhero career. In light of a few things that have happened, there's a, there's a few things that I would personally like to do. Um, I'm Phoenix Jones. I'm also Ben Fodor. Uh, I also protect the city. I also am a father. I also am a brother. You know, I'm just like uh, everyone else. The only difference is that um, I decided to make a difference and stop crime in my neighborhood and my area. I intend to keep making that difference. Uh, the charges were false. This was the type of thing you'd expect to see in a superhero film. Now, Jones would later go on to claim that he was influenced to show his identity by threats made from the district attorney, but we only really have his word on this, and we know he had actually revealed his identity minutes earlier in the courthouse, when a court officer ordered him to remove his mask. As a result of him revealing his true identity, Ben Fodor would be put under a ton more scrutiny, and ended up losing his job teaching children with special needs. Of course, revealing his identity also added a lot more risk to his personal life, since now anyone could find out who he was, and with him being active on Twitter and Instagram, it wasn't hard to find out where he was on patrol. The next few years for Jones were actually relatively uneventful, although there was the occasional funny moment, like him challenging and then instantly beating a man in mutual combat. However, in November of 2013, his wife Purple Rain left him, and to add insult to injury, she left him because she wanted to be with another superhero, who she said was better, Renegade, the alleged best superhero in the UK. Unfortunate, but hey, at least he still had the Rain City superhero movement, right? Yeah, that disbanded the next year. You see, since its formation, a rift had begun to grow among the group. One of the biggest issues was the use of illegal weapons by some of its members. This was something which really worried Jones, who did not want the name of the group to get tarnished. So, in May of 2014, he disbanded the group. Jones would later go on to state that he considered some of the members of the group the wrong kinds of people, and also stated that the group was poorly organised. After the disbanding of the Rain City superhero movement, it would later be reformed as a proper company by Jones, but this new group doesn't seem to have done anything or even be active today. It seemed that the superhero career of Phoenix Jones would end in 2019, when he publicly announced he had decided to retire, but the one thing that many thought would completely end his superhero career, or any chance of a comeback, was when he was arrested in January of 2020. Now, without context, some may assume he was arrested for being a vigilante, or for causing serious harm to another person, but in reality, he was arrested for selling MDMA to undercover cops. This didn't seem to be a one-off either. He accepted payment online, then when he delivered the drugs in person, he agreed to supply more. Jones and several others were also found to be in the possession of almost four grams worth of cocaine. After his initial arrest, some people in the local community came forward and claimed he had been doing this for years, even selling to people while in his superhero costume. This really changes the perspective of his entire superhero career, and any incident of him going after drug dealers. On paper, this would seem like the end for Phoenix Jones. After all, he had retired, his reputation had been tarnished by being publicly exposed as a drug dealer, and he had gone silent on social media. 
it really did seem that Ben Fodor had put his alter ego aside. But it would appear that the polar Phoenix Jones was just too much for Ben Fodor to deal with. Jones would not reappear publicly until the end of May 2020. In a Twitter post, he announced that if anyone in downtown Seattle needed help during the protests that were taking place over the shooting of George Floyd, they should contact him. There was obviously a lot of joking about him being a drug dealer, but most people seemed eager to welcome him back with open arms. Perhaps these people were willing to look past his mistakes and appreciate the good he had done in the past. Or perhaps they were simply blindsided by the real-life superhero dream. I'll leave it up to you to decide what you believe. As the protests raged on throughout Seattle, Phoenix Jones seemingly did his best to help people who had been injured or affected by the clashes between protesters and police officers. After the police abandoned the East Precinct to protesters on the 8th of June, the Capitol Hill organised protest, also known as CHOP or CHAZ, was formed. Not long after, Jones moved his attention to CHOP and began to patrol its streets while live-streaming, with him later going on Twitter to clarify his opinions on CHOP. The CHAZ army is a group exercising their right to free speech and open carry firearms. I'm only going to stop crimes that put people in danger, medical calls and theft of personal property. Now, the inner politics of CHOP really does deserve its own video, but I'm not here to talk about that. What's important to understand for this video is that the police were really not welcome within Chaz, which makes sense since police brutality is what started the entire protest in the first place. Instead, CHOP relied on its own makeshift police force, made up of what some may call armed vigilantes. You could argue that Phoenix Jones and the other real-life superheroes in Chaz were not that out of place there. Phoenix Jones would end up leaving CHOP temporarily on the 17th of June. Two days later, he would go onto Instagram to state his personal feelings towards the Black People Only Healing Zone in Cal Anderson Park, and why he does not support it. Jones would return to patrolling CHOP on the 20th, where there was an active shooter on the loose, and multiple murders. It's clear from his Twitter feed that the constant crime in CHOP was really changing his view on the zone and how safe it was. Possibly as the result of this criticism, on the 21st of July, one of the Twitter accounts for CHOP released a statement saying that security has been directed to deny access to Phoenix Jones and other superheroes. As you could imagine, Jones was really not happy about this decision. While this criticism probably played a part in why Jones and the other superheroes were banned, it wasn't the only problem Jones was causing. While Phoenix Jones coming out of retirement following the drugs incident was something that people rightfully joked about online, it was actually an extremely controversial topic within the real-life superhero community. Jones had really helped the movement gain a lot of mainstream attention. He had even inspired and previously worked alongside many of the real-life superheroes active in Chaz, but now he'd become somewhat of a liability to them. His arrest ruined the reputation of the community, and his always looking for a fight attitude made him a ticking time bomb, especially with the media attention he always brought with him. A video taken from Chaz shows several other heroes talking about how problematic Phoenix Jones is. Yeah, dude's out here for the fucking camera cred, you know what I'm saying? Should, but we've had numerous crazy. reports I from women who are here he that tell guy. us that they, he victimized <laughs> them in the past, so <laughs> my kill is... Wow, wait, that's actually insane. That's not something I thought I knew. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know from, like, one we, internet we video. We were all disappointed because he was, like, the that's face oh, of the Oh, big problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, are you talking about that little guy, Phoenix? No, 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 no. The, the big guy. Oh, oh, what, what, what's the, what's the situation? Sorry, I just heard him run out. Oh, just like, he hurts and kills people, then we're here to deal with that. Sure. I'm just saying the second Red knows what better people. He's been, he actually worked with them. Okay, take care. Hey, hey, Red, Red, what's, what's going on, man? I just caught the tail end of that. Oh, nothing. We're just out here keeping people safe. If you from see Phoenix Jones, let us know. Uh, who's who's Phoenix Jones? He's the other guy who used to be a superhero and still rolls around. Well, how's he dressed? What's that? How does he dress? I guess black and gold. Like oh yeah 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 I saw him earlier. Yeah. Yeah he was here earlier. What about the wizard? Well, what's what's wizard? What's, I don't know a wizard. But what's hold on what's what's Phoenix Jones's deal? Uh, he's gotten into a lot of trouble. I'll say that on camera. Okay. Y'all stay safe. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Post chop. 
Phoenix Jones is still really active, and has a pretty strong social media presence, with him often live-streaming himself on patrol. He even did a Q&A on Twitter, and as you could imagine, a lot of it was just questions about his arrest, to which he gave some... interesting answers. Honestly, I began working on this video because I was surprised to find out that Phoenix Jones was still active, but what I found really interesting while researching this video was that a big portion of people seemed to forgive or just ignore his past misdeeds when he came back. Maybe it is because many of us want to be like him, to fight for what he claims to stand for, to put on a mask and be a superhero. At the end of the day, it cannot be denied that Phoenix Jones has helped a lot of people over the years, but it is also clear he has a massive ego, and he may have not always had the best of intentions. Whether or not the good he has done outweighs the bad is something I will just have to leave up to you to decide.